Hey church, welcome to Proverbs 30 day. It is so good to be with you today, this morning, afternoon, evening, nighttime, daytime, whatever. Good to be here. I'm Abby, I am from our Chester campus. Uh, I'm a first year college student at Audacious College um, doing a placement in youth ministry. I lead our kids department in Chester and an interesting fact about me is that I can say the alphabet backwards. Not going to do it now, but maybe another time. Welcome to Proverbs 30 Day, as I said earlier. Um, so good to be doing these devotions with you. I hope you've enjoyed the book of Proverbs and gained a load of wisdom from it. Um, and hopefully today we're going to gain even more. We're looking at Proverbs 30 today, as I said, and we're just going to be looking and focusing on um, a couple of verses. Um, verse 7 to 9 says, and then he prayed, God, I'm asking for two things before I die. Don't refuse me. Banish lies from my lips and liars from my presence. Give me enough food to live on, neither too much nor too little. If I'm too full, I might get independent, saying, God, who needs him? If I'm poor, I might steal and dishonour the name of my God. A little bit of background information about Proverbs 30. It's written by a guy called Agor. Um, he wrote this proverb, son of Jacob, and <laughs> I know these things because it literally says it right at the start. Um, yeah, I'm not some scholar, just read it, just saying. <laughs> um, but yeah, focusing on these verses and I want to look at prayer. What is prayer? When I say prayer, what do you think of? Do you think of a huge auditorium filled with people, filled with the Holy Spirit, fueled by the power of God, declaring kingdom to come to earth do you think of an old lady in a pew in a church do you think of maybe a walk you take and uh, maybe a lake that you sit by and pray do you think of a phone call you have with a friend once a week where you pray for your workplace I don't know what comes to mind when you think of prayer do you go to God with requests and questions and a list of things you want God to do? This, that, the other, I don't know. Hey, it's not always really negative telling God what to do because sometimes there is only some things he can fulfil himself. Um, but sometimes I think we try and tell God what to do and I'm not sure if that's the best idea. Prayer isn't just talking and asking God for stuff, but prayer is talking with God, communicating with him. Why? Because he's relational. I saw a video of a worship leader who um, she was teaching and talking on an experience she had and she was leading worship and she found a piece of Lego in a pocket. I probably should have got a piece of Lego to help, but you just have to use your imagination. She found a piece of Lego in her pocket and she saw it and there could have been so many things that came to her mind when she saw it whether it was why is this in my pocket I'm meant to be leading worship there's a piece of lego here why is this not at home why is it not in the box of lego that we created to solve this problem in the first place why do I have a piece of lego but instead the first thought that came to her mind was oh man I love my kids and hey she compared that to um, what our relationship with like is with Jesus and that we can have our prayers, our thoughts, our little nothings almost, those little pieces of Lego and we give them to God, communicating with him in our day and he looks at them and could think, oh man, this is why, why have I got this piece of Lego? I am meant to be saving the world and now you're making me look at this piece of Lego. Jesus could do that. But it's not who he is. Jesus looks our thoughts, our prayers, our mumblings to him and says, man, I love my kids. What do you pray for? Do you pray, God, keep me healthy, safe, 
make me wise, help me be kind, compassionate, but I also want to get a parking space when I get to work. I also want this red light to turn green by the time I get there. Or do you pray to be radically changed by the presence of God? Do you ask God for a constant awareness of his presence that every decision you make, every move, every turn you take, all of that, that sounds like a song, doesn't it? <laughs> every, do you ask God that every part of your life would be transformed by an awareness of his presence? All matters because, because it's all said to God, but something I know for sure is when our prayer matches up with the heart of God, it's like fireworks because our heart is in line with his. Now, God does answer prayers. Amen. That either yes, no, which sometimes hurts, but what I think can be the worst is wait. Lord, teach me patience. <laughs> but we always love the yes answer, right? But one thing I know that God I don't even think it's in his vocabulary to say, oh, I don't know, or hmm, not sure about that. God definitely doesn't say, give me three to five business days to make the decision and then I'll have a think. Doesn't happen. It's not who he is. This proverb gives us a great idea on what we can pray for. Two points I want to look at. The first one is that God would keep us from lying. When an American president gets sworn in and um, they lay their hand on the Bible and the first thing or the last thing, sorry, they say before the crowd cheers as they're sworn in as the new American president is. So help me, God, help me, God, to stay away from things that oppose your character and help us to be true to you. Keep me from being a liar, but also believing lies that other people try and tell me. My prayer is that we would be in a place where all we see is truth. Keep me far from things that take me down the wrong path. My goodness, 2021, isn't it so easy to get sidetracked and distracted by these things the world may present at us that distract us from the call of God and the path that he has lit before us. In Psalm 84, it says, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than dwell in the tents of the wicked. I would rather serve God than anything else. Lord, I delight in your law. I want to obey your commands. Keep me close to you. Who else wants to be true to God? The second thing is ask for daily provision. Don't forget the importance of the Lord's Prayer. Oh my goodness, I didn't even go to a Christian primary school, but every day in assembly, we'd say the Lord's Prayer and ask God to give us our daily bread. It says that if I'm too full, I might get independent and say, God, who needs him? I don't want to ever be so full that I don't recognise the need for Jesus in my life. Something about me is I love documentaries about anything and everything. But ones I've seen a lot of is there are people who hoard things, collect things, keep hold of things for ages purely just to have stuff. They collect vouchers and coupons and all sorts and go and bulk buy things at their garage end up looking like mini supermarkets. They have to rent storage units to keep all of the stuff they have. We're in the process of moving house and we're clearing out loft, garage, wardrobes, everything. And um, one thing we have found is we have so much stuff. I don't get any joy. None of us get any joy from all this stuff. In fact, it just brings stress and makes us feel overwhelmed. The guys at the tip think we are crazy. We are back there like a yo-yo. And what this encourages us to do is to seek God for our daily provision, to have a heart that relies on him the most, that we give everything to him so that we almost become empty just to receive from God. Now, that's not just what's, you know, what's in our cupboards, clearing out everything in your cupboards, because that's not necessarily the wisest thing to do. But it's also a heart posture that I don't want to have a greedy heart. 
um, and more doesn't always mean a dopamine hit, that happy hormone to kick in because we've got stuff. Stuff doesn't make us happy, but the Lord makes us blessed. Lord, would you be our provider? Hey, if you're struggling with prayer, I've got something really revelational. Like, make sure you get your pens, notebooks, if you get anything from this. I'm just going to give you a couple of seconds to get ready. If you are struggling with prayer, tell God. Give God those little pieces of Lego saying, hey, I'm struggling with prayer. God, I don't know what to say. And almost like you would with maybe a best friend. Just random thoughts, ideas, things that come to mind. Because God is ultimately, as Sunday school, kids church, it might sound, is our best mate. And um, we can tell him everything, give him our Lego pieces. All those little thoughts, the prayers, they add up for him to look at and say, man, I love my kids. I hope you've um, gained some wisdom from today that um, we can seek God for anything. Pray as bold, as big, as small, as what seems like nothing as we like, because at the end of the day, God answers prayers. He's faithful to answer our prayer. And he's faithful to still love us, to look at our lives, our ideas, our mumblings in our brain and love us anyway. And hey, if that's not good news, I don't know what is. Hopefully this has encouraged you. I'm so glad you welcomed me into 11 minutes 44 of your day, um, whenever that was. And I hope to see you very soon. Praying for great favour, blessings, strength mercy, grace on your life um, and that today you would see the favour of the Lord and that he is with you, near you and for you. See you soon.